everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone from all over the world. My name is Stacey Alvarez de la Campa and I am the content manager with Island Innovation. So welcome to the final session of day two of our virtual Island Summit 2021. In this session of Island Stories, this is our second um, session of Island Stories. We're gonna be chronicling and hearing some personal accounts of island life and some histories and some reminiscences from people from different islands all over the world. So this evening here in Barbados, where I'm speaking from, we have the pleasure of welcoming Nayere Fuata. She is a film producer with Sunpix Films. And I know Nayere, you've also dabbled in fitness and singing because I did a little research <laughs> before we did our session. So um, you're going to be telling the story based on your documentary, which is Passage to Rotuma in which you're going to chronicle your return to your father's homeland. And just to give our um, audience a little bit of background, um, Nayade grew up believing that her dad was of Maori descent initially. And when her dad fell ill, she made the decision to travel to his homeland. They, you know, they talked a bit more about where he was from and his history. And she discovered that he was actually from a Pacific island, a small island. The population is approximately 2,000, I believe, Nayade. Yeah, yeah, just a little less, yeah. A little yeah. less, yeah. yeah. So, so this, in this island of the Pacific. So um, at that point, Naide made the decision to take her eight-year-old daughter, eight years old at the time, Ruby, um, to travel back home to Rotuma. So the journey, it's a bit difficult. I do remember some of the scenes in the film on the ferry. <laughs> and um, But in the end, it's this incredible journey of self-discovery and hope. And it's a really magical story. So we look forward to you talking a bit about it. Um, just some housekeeping before we go into everything. So, you know, welcome to everyone. Please, in the chat, you can introduce yourself. You can say where you're from. Just make sure that in the drop down menu, you put that, you know, the chat is to everyone because it does tend to default to hosts only. And um, the webinar is, is going to be live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. And if you have any questions, please feel free to use the question and answer um, function. And I will be looking to curate them and, you know, try to ask your questions to Nayeri at some point after her presentation. So without further ado, Nayeri, over to you. We'll be listening to your presentation. I look forward to it. Kia ora koutou katoa, ano ia te nganaj a tokoa. Um, thank you so much for having me on this virtual island summit, and it's such a privilege to once again share my story um, about my ancestral home of Rotuma. Um, as you know, as I've been introduced, I'm a producer, and usually I'm behind the scenes. But in 2010, I um, shared my experience on screen of going to the island of Rotuma, and it was deeply personal. But I realised in my work um, we so often ask people to share their stories and as I didn't want to ask things of people I wasn't prepared to do myself I thought yes I better get I, I better get on that white wagon as well and that's how Salatsi Rituma came to be. Um, I don't have any slides but I will have some moving images in, um, in the background um, as I talk along. You know growing up away from my heritage has been um, a very long and slow journey of discovering my identity. Um, being born in England um, to a Dutch mother and a Rotuman father um, was a very different um, environment and meant the only way um, I could understand that heritage was through them. And um, in Rotuma, you're given, uh, your name is significant. You're usually named after someone and then they would become your singoa, which is kind of like um, being a godparent. Um, my mother initially thought my father was Māori, as mentioned, and because he'd lived in New Zealand and often talked about it. But when they were married um, and started a family, they decided to name us Māori names. Um, and my mother had this very small dictionary, Māori dictionary. So she found the, the name Tiara for my older sister and then my name, Nairi. Um, and it was also, I was also named after a New Zealand actress who was living in, in England at the time, Nairi, Nairi Dawn Porter. And Muringa, which means the last child. And I always joke with my sisters that being the middle child, um, I was actually the only planned one. My sister was born four months after my parents were married and my younger sister, we always say, was a surprise. Um, I ended up 
being the one with the curly hair and the more prominent Polynesian features. And I was also given the middle name Moana. And we know that Moana um, means the ocean and the sea. And we all know the Disney version, Moana the legend, the young Polynesian girl that wanted to explore the world. Um, I think from the outset with my close relationship with my father, I was always going to be that one that would end up being very involved in Maori and Pacific communities and connecting with these communities and discovering where I fit in all of this. So, you know, when dad um, left, was in New Zealand in the 50s and he was going to be a priest and then he decided he wasn't. So he went to the UK to study to become a teacher. Um, and that's where he met mum. And after so many years, he just, he's managed to convince mum to come to New Zealand. And during that time, um, we arrived in 1973, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with, the dawn raids were happening here um, with Pacific families to find overstayers. So it was a really racially turbulent time that we walked into. And um, it really wasn't the New Zealand that my father had remembered. Um, growing up with uh, very few Rotumans in New Zealand and not living in Auckland, where the majority of Pacific communities live, because we grew up in Whakatane, which is in the Eastern Bay of Plenty. Um, Dad did manage to connect with his family in Fiji. And so my sisters and I went to Fiji in the early 80s for the first time. And that was the first time we had any connection with um, Rotuman people um, and our family. And, you know, even then we thought going to Rotuma was really difficult. Um, and you know, life's busy. And I think my father always spoke romantically about his beloved island, of its beautiful beaches, the beautiful people, the sweetest oranges. And I think it wasn't really until I'd left home and um, a Rotuman group was formed as you know, uh, more Rotumans were immigrating to New Zealand that I saw him speak, sing and dance and be in his element, telling jokes and enjoying being Rotuman. But after working on Tangata Pacifica for quite some time and seeing Vilisoni Hironiko's Rotuman film, The Land His Eyes, and with my father's ailing health, I thought it was time. We really did want him to come back with us, but as he needed a lot of care, he couldn't make that journey. And it was daunting for me. Um, going back to Rotuma, going to Rotuma without a security blanket. I felt like I was completely out of my comfort zone, but my first cousin Fuata really, um, Fuata, who was my father's singer, namesake, um, really helped um, that me make that journey there. Um, Rotuma is a volcanic island, um, 47 square meters. It's distinctive in um, Google Maps for its shape. And I always think I was just thinking before that it's not that dissimilar to the Island Innovation logo there. Um, and it's uh, directly north of Fiji, which is directly north of New Zealand. So same timeline. And there are about 1,200 um, people living on the island. And most of the Rotumans do live in um, Fiji. And we're governed by Fiji, but are Polynesian, um, at, who, unlike the Fijians who are Melanesian. And our language has similar words in, as other Polynesian languages, but it is quite unique. It has um, 16 different vowel sounds. It has macrons, umlauts, um, dots above the I and below. Um, and, um, and even though, you know, I thought I was kind of prepared for how simple the boat ride would be, um, I really wasn't. As mentioned, I decided to take, you know, I thought it's really important that my eight-year-old um, got a taste of Rotuma um, at a very young age. It's something that we didn't get to experience. And I think it was important to get her connected to the land, to the people, um, learn how they live humbly and, um, and connect those roots and firm that up. Um, you know, when we got there, it was absolutely stunning. That boat ride was horrendous, but there was nothing like it when you um, got to those um, beaches and the sunsets and um, you can't, you know, have a look at that. It's beautiful. Um, my cousin Alexio, who I actually had not met, um, was our host and he was um, quite a recluse. Um, so having you know, being a host for us was really, you know, quite incredible. Um, 
and you know one of the things that we noticed uh, first was um, you know uh, I guess um, how beautiful the land was um, and how simple um, uh, life was. Um, we had a mamasa, which is like, um, it's a welcoming ceremony, and it's to ensure your wellness um, during your stay. And I think it's also to ensure that you respect the, um, the island as well. Um, there's only about one boat a month, but during Christmas time, there are a few more boats during the year. But as I, um, Rotumans are used to um, not having a boat arrive because of weather, because of all sorts of things, uh, because the boat's maybe not working. So um, they're used to going without and just living off the land. Um, the food is in abundance. Um, Rotumans work February to November and they take December and January off. Um, it's celebration time and family time, and they work hard on their crops. Um, look, there's, look at those watermelons, pineapple, taro, um, and breadfruit, and come Christmas time, you know, there's plenty to go around. Um, and while the oranges are known for their quality and export, export has been inhibited, um, by problems of storage and transportation. So the main export from the island is copra, which is used for coconut oil pro pro um, products. I have to, um, some Rotumans will hate that I've mentioned this, but we're also nicknamed the, the Bisiketi, which is Rotuman for biscuit, because after the explorers came with biscuits, the Rotumans loved them so much that they planted them thinking that they would grow. And um, while it's often a joke, I like to think of it as being innovative and thinking about the future and trying to feed the majority. Um, after, after a people surge on the island, you know, around the Christmas time, there is often a lot of waste. And at this stage, there is no real rubbish disposal system. Um, unfortunately, plastic bottles and bags do end up in the tide and wash ashore. And this is becoming an increasing problem. Um, and, you know, uh, unfortunately, this is like a car, this is a car wreck that is on the on the um, beach here and you can see it's sitting in the water and um, and while this isn't the norm this does happen around the island um, and power on the island villages get power for a few days and uh, sorry not a few days a few hours a day um, and some people have their own gen generators, but that is not the norm. Um, when I took Ruby and um, when I went to Rotuma, I must say, there were two things that I really wanted to set out as future commitments. And that was to remain connected and to make an effort to go every three years or so, and also to get my sisters to the island. So um, I took Ruby again in 2013. Um, we flew and it was quite a different experience because we went in September when it, the island was quiet it was in working mode and um and it was a stark difference to the father days of christmas time and um that's when they just they work they um, just get on with um producing for for christmas time um sadly you know my cousin alexio um, passed away in 2016 um and as there is no mortuary on the island he had to be buried within 24 hours so his family that were in fiji um uh you know had to view the service and his burial via the internet um and we're very fortunate now, though that that could happen um my father passed away in 2014 and he'd always asked us to um that he would love it if we could take his ashes back um to Rotuma and that was the purpose Apologies, everyone. It seems like a technical interruption. Hopefully, Naira will be back. Oh, I dropped out. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. You're back. Go ahead. I'm back. It could be my dodgy internet and um, some bad weather. Um, but anyway, but that was a really good excuse to get my sisters over there. And um, 
And so uh, they had an incredible experience. And for me, it was um, it was wonderful for Ruby to, to be able to show her cousins around the island. Um, and, you know, I think he would have been so happy. It was a beautiful experience. And um, um, my mother now um, has said that when she passes away, she wants us to take her ashes back to Rotuma so she can be with her husband. Um, yeah, so I guess that's um, that's probably a, an overview of what's happened so far. Oh, other than that, I do want to mention that New Zealand last year recognised the Rotuman language, and we've become one of nine Pacific languages that have a celebration week here. And, you know, I'm really proud of our New Zealand Rotuman communities that lobbied really hard for this. And I think in the diaspora, the language retention is always threatened. Um, so, you know, it's kind of one of those things that I wished my father had spoken more to him in the household. But this year, I did make a commitment to do a beginner's course in Rotuman. So um, I did share that story too um, online. And um, that's been an incredible way of connecting even deeper to the island so that I can understand I understand far more through language as well now. And um, and I think it just defines who we are as Rotumans. That sounds absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. You know, it's, I'm really glad that I did see the film, but, you know, through... Naide, your recounting today and your retelling has really given us um, a nice overview, as you say. And I think it's brought us all with a deeper understanding of what it did mean for you to have that reconnection with your heritage and with where you came from. So um, I'm just going to you know, ask a couple of questions just to get the discussion going for a bit. And um, I had to ask you about that first time when you actually see the island after that relatively horrendous ferry ride that you were on, I won't say too much because I would like to encourage people to see the film. I did see the film on YouTube, it is available on YouTube. And there's this moment you first see Rotuma and I think the, um, you know, the, it, the emotion is palpable. Could you tell us a bit about that when you first saw the island? Oh yeah, it's incredible because I think nobody, um, you, you're never prepared for that. I, don't, I haven't, you know, when you've seen nothing for days, um, and all of a sudden there's a speck on the horizon and then it slowly becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and you know all it's maybe like childbirth all the horrendous time that you went through is just worth it in that moment and when you're coming up closer and it was it was it was um incredibly emotional I still feel emotional now when I talk about it yes Yes, yeah, I cried along with you when I was first watching the film. It was absolutely beautiful. So, you know, and speaking of that homecoming, I could see it seemed as if there was a there were two journeys happening. There was a literal and a figurative journey. It seemed as if you were on your journey, but that was also an inner journey towards, I think, kind of a sense of affirmation for yourself. I did sense in the film your your strong need to connect with who you are and your your sense of self. And I thought it was you mentioned that, you know, Ruby was with you. How, how was your relationship with Ruby, you know, affected by that trip back to Rotuma? Oh, I, you know, I think our relationship is, you know, we're close because she is my only child. And um, I think she has a better understanding that um, of Rotuma and who she is at her age or and growing up than possibly what, I had, um, which so it seems quite ironic. I do remember, you know, it's that empowerment. It's that knowing who you are. And she said she had an experience at school, with, um, you know, um, probably a couple of years ago. And she said there was a, a young girl, a young Pacific Island girl, who said to her, who made a comment and said, well, you just don't know what it's like to be a Pacific Islander or something, what it's like for me. And she, she didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. And she didn't feel the need to say anything or prove who she was because she goes, but mum, it's okay. I, I know I'm returning. She doesn't, you know, just because she doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's that really strong um, sense of self. Yeah. Yes, that's wonderful. Um, I have seen, um, we do have a, 
question that I'll just pose to you. Um, it's mentioned is made of the population. If you know, it does it seem relatively steady? Is there any what we would call on our part of the world brain drain or depopulation? Anyone leaving the island? Is there a conscious effort to stay or what's the population situation like there now? I think the population has been steady. It did have a, you know, a, a decline um, uh, over a number of years. Um, I do think there's more people that um, are conscious about staying on the island. A lot of returning families do have someone that, that actually lives there to stay connected, to look after the land. Um, you know, it's it's very easy for me to say, oh, you know, you should stay there because it's beautiful and all that sort of thing. But of course, you know, if you're young and you're growing up, you want to explore the world. You want to have, you know, other opportunities. So I do think it's quite hard, you know, to um, uh, to retain people without. But I do think there are a lot number of people that are going back there. Okay, that's that's good to know. And it does seem as if there's a nice balance between that idea of, of returning to reclaim your sense of self and, you know, the natural inclination to be possibly curious about the outside world. And I think um, that's important in terms of sustainability and the maintaining that abundance that you spoke of, because that did strike me, those of you who will watch the film, um, at the Fada, the traditional gathering, the food and the meats and the togetherness, there is this huge sense of community and abundance that's there. And that was really heartwarming to see. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, I mean, you know, there's no shortage of um, food on the island and, um, and even, you know, fish. I think we were, I, I, when we had one of our first meals there, there was a plate of lobster. And I think we, we were so, we we're going, oh, this lobster. No, 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 we better not have any because, then, you know, other people will want it. Um, <laughs> and then everybody walks past the lobster because they're so used to it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For us, we're like, what? We can have one whole lobster to ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's brilliant. And I do remember a quote, there was someone in the film who said, all Ratumans are millionaires in their own way. And that particular line really, really stuck out because there is the sense of abundance in terms of community and togetherness that I thought was really fantastic. It was yeah. brilliant. I don't okay, think... Yeah, I don't think, you know, like even, yeah, that was my cousin, Alexa, and he, you know, they don't want for much. Um, mm. And I think that, that uh, it is like going, stepping back in time in this beautiful place that's kind of sat still for a while. And, um, you know, they often return, re, um, say that returns are conservative, but they're conservative almost in a preservative way. Um, mm -hmm. that, that not that they're not wanting to progress, they just really want to hold on to some of that those traditions and that culture and that sense of community. And um, I think that's really something that's quite beautiful. Yes, that, that did um, stay with me after I saw the film. It is one of those films that will stay with you. Um, I do have a question from the audience. Someone is asking, Andrea is asking um, if you could say a little bit about traditional navigation in Rotuma and are young people learning the gift of navigation? That's an interesting question. That is an interesting question. Um, yeah. I would, I mean, I don't know, um, uh, you know, uh, a lot about, I mean, I know that we, we got to the island, we're natural navigators, um, because we had to travel so far um, to to, fight, to get there in the first place, um, I think um, I'm not sure about uh, that traditional sense in terms of what the young people learn. They they do learn to respect the island. Um, they do go, go out on the canoes. There are times for doing certain things, um, and I think that they're very fully aware of their environment and how that works for them. So, um, yeah, and I know that um, some of the uh, traditional navigators that um, around the Pacific have often said that Rotuma was a, uh, a, a stop, stopping place, you know, um, a pit stop for people as they traveled around um, because there was uh, uh, talk of that you could find that connection to even Tahiti 
um, you know, with some old burial sites on the island and, you know, the, all the different people that have come through the island. Mm. Oh, brilliant, great. Okay, so we have a question here that's directly linked to climate change in the environment. Um, we have Corinne asking, is Rotuma experiencing any evidence of rising sea levels around the coast? Is that something that you noticed at all? Um, I uh, probably, um, so I've been there three times now. Um, I hadn't noticed anything significant. Um, I would say that potentially it's, they're, they're kind of more fortunate that it is a volcanic island um, and it doesn't suffer from what the at some of the atolls are, are going through at the moment. Um, but I do think that they have to, you know, their um, things are always changing around the island, but n nothing significant. Okay, well, that, that's heartening. That's really good to hear because, again, it sounds as if there has been kind of um, an affirmation of culture in terms of the language being recognized, which I think is wonderful. They're, and that you're learning, too, and I think that's great. <laughs> that's really wonderful. That's all to you. That um, when you, how many vowel sounds did you say there were? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> you know, I, 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 some, when I watch back some of the classes, I just go, oh my gosh, it's such a tongue, tongue twister sometimes, you know. Yes, um, yes. But, but, but it is really good when you can, uh, you can visually see it. Um, I'm more of a visual than an oral learner. Yes. <laughs> I need to see it in order to say it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, no, that's wonderful. So um, in terms of that, um, my question is Ruby learning Rotuman as well, or is it just uh, you? No, it's just me. I think that might, uh, that might be a little bit further down the chain, but she understands a few words. And um, she Great. still remembers some of the things from, you know, uh, probably not better things to remember. <laughs> but you know, um, you know, she she knows a few things, and um, she's but she's at university at the moment, so I think she's focusing, oh not focusing on that. <laughs> Yeah, see, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, I do remember her her response. She in the film, um, the audience, when you do get a chance to see it, there is a really real sense of 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 growth within Ruby. She's a very she seems to me to be a very steady, and I, I can really sense the connection between the two of you as mother and daughter. But even as the film progresses, there's a sense of she's aware of of the the legacy. That, you know that she's being left with and that she's going to embrace and it's there's a strong I think that's one of the most affirming things of the film so we'll definitely recommend yeah. everyone to see it that's really wonderful I, I we when we went in 2017 I did some interviews with my sisters and um and Ruby but she was going you know she welled up and she got really emotional and she said mum you're not allowed to put that on you're not allowed to do anything <laughs> But it, it, was, it was not until I'd had that conversation with her and she did get really emotional that I realised how connected she was, you know, as I think, or even more as connected as, it, as even she possibly realised. Yes, yes, that's great. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to some of the people watching. I can see people are here from watching from Edmonton, Canada, although they're also Nigerian. We have yeah. people who say they love that there's, they're hearing these island stories through an authentic kind of lens and how important storytelling is. Um, we have comments that everyone says that it's such an inspiring thing to read and how beautiful it is that you've, you know, you did make the efforts to, to make that journey when your dad fell ill. So I do sense that, and someone else is saying it's a lovely story and it's told from the heart. So oh. I think all around you're, you're garnering some, some, you know, more fans. And someone from Maryland, USA says that you rock. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, it's really lovely. And, you know, awesome. it, it, it did inspire too. I think, uh, you know, a lot of returnments who, who were like me, who felt it was too hard, too difficult. Oh, no, I'm not connected. There's nowhere to stay. I don't know what to do. And I think um, I got a lot of messages after when it first went to air um, that, you know, you've, I want to take my father home. I want to take my mother home. I want to go. Yes. I'm going to make the effort. And I do think, you know, that, um, that that's been one of the wonderful, um, I guess, uh, benefits of sharing a story that, you know, you can, you can, 
let others know that you can do it too, you know? I exactly. Think, yeah. Exactly. And it's interesting you do say that because we, in our very first installment of our island stories, we did have um, one of our speakers was from a um, group called Shagossian Voices. And that's um, an island that was depopulated. And as a result of that, you know, he is kind of marooned from his homeland and his sense of self. So it's been interesting that we've had these two sessions back to back where we can see your story and your voice lends his story even more resonance and even more relevance. So we really appreciate that we've gotten the chance to, to have a chat with you. This is fantastic. So, yeah. so we have to hear more from you. <laughs> Nighty, this, can't, this can't be the last time that we chat together here. I'm going to see, you know, we have some other questions in our, in our um, question and answer box. And um, this is an interesting question from Tom, um, because I actually love surfing myself. And Tom is asking, do any visiting surfers come through Rotuma? Uh, well, there have been a few surfers. Now, there's a, um, in, the, in the documentary, we t I spoke to um, uh, a young uh, woman who was, based in America, but she, you know, she's returned and she travels back. Mm, and yes. her and her partner came back with their surfboards and they would walk probably about 5K every day. Um, with their impact, 10K maybe, <laughs> with their surfboards to go surfing. <laughs> yes, I can relate to that. I'm a surfer myself. So I know there's, you always make that sacrifice to find the right surf break. Right spot. And, you know, at the, at your right spot. And it's often like a kind of a closely guarded secret yeah. when you find <laughs> The, your your surf break yeah. so so it yeah. becomes a bit territorial so I can imagine yeah yeah okay. and you can you know there are only certain places you can do that too around the island because of the reef so yeah, <laughs> yeah I can imagine. <laughs> okay we have other questions on a more practical level someone's asking Rogelio is asking how do you ensure adequate supply of drinking water do you use rain water what kind of how is the drinking water they have, situation yeah. like? I think that what they do is they do use a lot of bottled water, which of course you know creates the mm. plastic. Um, but they um, some some areas I know that where we when we went back last time, you could drink. They treated some of the water, um, okay. but um, but generally they boil. Yes. Okay. Boil, okay boil, awesome. yeah. And there's some rotumens, you know, it's it's like when you if you go to the islands, if you go to Samoa, you know, you, you wouldn't drink the water, but some people the Samoans do because they're just used to it. They don't have okay. the, they don't have the yeah the issues that um, visitors have. Okay. Awesome. And we also have a question from Alex. He's asking, are there any key conservation or climate adaptation projects? Like, do you find that? Generally, you know, Rotum is a bit more isolated from that kind of thing, or is there a sense of, you know, people coming to, to check on what the conservation is like on the island? Yeah, I think um, they probably could, um, uh, they could probably do with a little bit more of that. Um, I do know okay. that, um, you know, as we said, you know, there's only power for three hours a day. They were trying to see a lot of the villages with, um, you know, um, solar power systems. Um, they, and I think, you know, it, it, the one of the biggest things for me was that whole, the rubbish, the disposal, you know. Yes, the yes. Of, you know, if we go to an island here or some sort of uh, reserve, you have to, you go in and you come out with your rubbish. Um, and it's almost like it, it would be wonderful if you go to Rotuma on the boat and then you're able to take your rubbish back with you or so, you know, which doesn't quite necessarily happen yet. I mean, it would be great to see less plastic use. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, um, yes, yes. Um, you know, and I think it, you know, it is just a matter of um, helping with certain programs to, um, to get to That's eliminate great. those issues. That's great. Yeah. Great. Well, I will say that it is really wonderful, your general message of going back and making that, that journey in terms of the, the reconnection. It sends a message about the importance of, to an extent, the reconnection of the diaspora to, to where you're from. And the fact that this really, you know, it can only be positive. And then if this kind of connection becomes something that's intergenerational, as we saw with, with, with Ruby, um, I think that's something that really is extremely, extremely inspirational. 
and I really was so I felt so privileged to see the film and at first I was like how come I never heard of this film <laughs> I was really really glad to see it and I you know I, I'm hoping that that everyone watching this evening will you know take the time to see it so thank you so thank you so so much for spending this time with us here today and I we really appreciate it and as I said I I will try be in touch with you for sure I need to come and find a nice surf break <laughs> in Rotuma I think I'm going to put that on my bucket list for sure so thank you thank you so much and we're just having a lot of people say thanks so much for your thank time you. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> thank you okay bye everyone bye bye bye, -bye.